time now for our big board. Our team of insiders ready to weigh in on today's story. Dan is right here with us to chat in just a moment, but we do want to talk again about Orlando. No one ever expects to be in a mass shooting, but the reality of the Orlando massacre shows us it can happen anywhere at any time. John Matthews, a 30-year law enforcement veteran, author of Mass Shootings, Six Steps to Survival, is here with what to do if it happens and you are somewhere near them. John, what do we do? Well, the first thing you want to do is exit. You want to get as far from the shooters as you possibly can. You may not have to go out the uh, entrance that you came in. Look for any way to get out, a side door, a back door, a loading door, maybe go through a kitchen. We heard several witnesses said um, that they got out and put distance between themselves and the shooter and resist that urge to go back in. I know you want to help your friends, but you don't want to be a victim. Uh, it, once you, uh, if you can't exit, then the next best thing to do is to find cover. Cover is anything that'll protect you from bullets. We heard a bartender say, I grabbed 10 people and we dove behind the bar. The bar actually deflected the bullets and saved lives. So jump behind a copy or a soda machine, anything that will stop or deflect those bullets. If you can't exit and you can't find cover, the next best thing to do is to conceal yourself. Get behind a curtain, anything that'll hide you from the shooter's sight. Uh, we heard some victims say they actually pulled bodies over themselves and concealed themselves from the shooter. If you can get out of that shooter's line of sight, then your chances of surviving the incident go up dramatically. Well, I'll tell you what, John, and I have one, one other quick question for you. What about engaging the shooter? If you feel like you have a chance to engage them, should you do that? Should you, should you try to stop them? Our research says no, only as a last resort should you engage the shooter. Almost all the time that an unarmed citizen engages a shooter, they end up being a victim. <clears throat> only during the following circumstances, uh, when you have three or more people, when the shooter is engaged in a non-shooting activity and you can attack him simultaneously, do you have any chance to survive? Well, you know what, John, thank you for your advice. Hopefully it's advice that none of us will ever need. No one out there will ever need, but thank you so much, John. And now to thank one you. of the biggest bands of all time, Led Zeppelin. They're in court today facing claims that stole the open for Stairway to Heaven from a song by another band. And Dan Abrams is here, our chief legal analyst, joining us now. And Dan, let, first let's listen to the songs. Here's Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. We all recognize that melody. Now, let's listen to the 1968 song Taurus by a group called Spirit. Sounds, sounds very familiar, Dan. Sounds very familiar. And we just had Ed Sheeran get sued for $20 million. We had the Blurred Lines case. So do you think there's a case here? Well, look, these cases are tough. A lot of this case has already been thrown out. We want artists to build on the work of other artists. But we don't want them to rip them off. Mm -hmm. And so the two fundamental questions are, number one, is it substantially similar? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it sounds that <laughs> way. my ear. But remember, the, the question isn't just sound. It's, it's more important, actually, in a case like this, the musical composition. And number two, and probably the most contested question in this case, is access. Meaning the spirit team effectively says, look, they, we were touring with them. They were sitting in the front row. We were talking to them about our music. And yet Jimmy Page, the lead guitarist who wrote Stairway to Heaven, says, I never heard that song when I wrote it. So important questions yeah. there. Yeah, and the song came out in 1968, so. It was a few years later that Led Zeppelin's song came out. Yeah, wow. uh, yeah, still. Long oh, you time mean long ago. time? Yes, absolutely. But they, they just issued a remastered version in 2014. And so that's now considered Got a it. new work. And so they're within the statute of limitations at this point. All right. Well, it's in the hands of say. the court right yep. now. That's right. So we'll see how that goes. And uh, what's in the on the court now is the NBA Finals. The Cavaliers down three to two on their way to a comeback or trying to make a comeback, taking game five against the Warriors last night. Three-time NBA champion and ESPN analyst Bruce Bowen joins us with what we can expect heading into game six on Thursday night. And Bruce, no team has ever made a comeback from three to one in the finals. The Cavaliers inching a little closer to that. What do they have to do to pull off a miracle? Well, first of all, you got to keep that same attack mentality that you have from LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. For them to go for 80 
two points between the two of them. That was incredible. 41 and 41, they played like their back was against the wall. And that's what you want. Michael, you know as a competitor, when you go on the road, you got to be focused. They shot 53% from the field. Golden State, 36%. Mm. You're at home. You got to do a better job. All right, so I have some stats here. This did not come from me just watching the game. Uh, LeBron James, 41 points, 16 rebounds. If Draymond Green was not suspended, do you think LeBron would have had such a big game? Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Who knows what would have happened? They did what they had to do. You can't worry about who's not there. It's all about the people who are on the court and who's making an impact. LeBron James and Kyrie Irving made the necessary impact. Now you look at the league's MVP and Steph Curry, what are you going to do? You are 8 for 21 at home. I think he'll be focused going into the next game, and you'll see a different Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors with Draymond Green back on the floor. Ruh -ruh. It'll be a great game. <laughs> yeah. All right, you got who do you got, Cavs? Uh, no. I, no. Now, I, I said the Cavs early on, but now I'm starting to think. You are? Yeah. All right, well, we will all find out. We thank you, Dan. We thank you, Bruce. And we thank you, John.